What was your reaction to this? I, I mean, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised at all. I mean, the Hall had no other choice. I mean, but just to put his name with the rest of the guys? Because really what is a celebration, it's a celebration of football, but it's a celebration of the other players and executive Bobby Bethford. It's a celebration of their careers and the people that were important to them. So when you've decided that you're not going to come to the celebration, I don't know what, what other recourse that the Hall had because – the truth of the matter, the attention should be on the other players. We should be talking about Randy Moss's career, Ray Lewis's career. We should be talking about Jerry Kramer, the great um, Green Bay Packer, who, who finally got in. That's, that's who we should be talking about. Terrell put them in a position where they had no other choice. So I'm looking forward to going to the weekend and celebrating with my brothers that are in the hall and celebrating this tremendous class that all the other guys decided that they wanted to be there and be a part of it. So this is one that is a very interesting dichotomy in the reaction that I saw. Like I said, I didn't, I didn't ask Chris. I wanted to wait and hear what he said said on TV, but I saw Joy Taylor tweet about this. Why does that matter? Her brother Jason is a Hall of Famer, and she said, she made it seem as if Jason feels similarly to Chris, and when I say the dichotomy, the people that aren't Hall of Famers, a lot of the media members, the, the reaction has been, my initial reaction was, listen, T.O. is being T.O. He's being petty. He's being selfish. He's He is taking away from a greater moment, but the Hall didn't have to meet petty with Petty, like they could have simply said, Terrell Owens not here today. Here's his stats. This is this member of the, you know, the 300 and whatever 12th member of the Hall of Fame. 90 second highlight video and move on. When you say they couldn't have, would that have bothered as a Hall of Famer? Would that, if they had done that, would that have bothered you? Would you think that's the? It wrong? wouldn't have bothered me, but there's no need to take 90 seconds away from the other guys because it's about the people that are there. All right, so why take the 90 seconds? We'll split it up amongst the other guys. He decided he didn't want to be there. It's not like he can't be there. He doesn't want to be there. So he doesn't want to accept the honor. No problem. They should move on without him. As a, as a Hall of Famer, because listen, I, whether, whatever your relationship with Terrell is or isn't, you for a few years have gone on TV and whenever asked about it before the vote said, Listen, this guy obviously should be in the Hall of Fame. Like, he shouldn't have to wait. The, the, I mean, we, we've shown this, what I think is a really cool graphic. 1,000 catches, 10,000 yards, 100 touchdowns. Here's the seven guys to ever do it, the history of this sport. Like, I, now, Larry's not eligible yet. He's still playing. But I, I, you had to wait a bunch of years. They thankfully didn't make Randy wait. But, like, they've, they've made everyone on that list wait, I, I believe, except for Randy and Tony Gonzalez, right? Yeah, the, and Jerry, of course. And Oh, I'm sorry, of yes. course. I, that was an oversight. Uh, Jerry was the last first ballot wide receiver Hall of Famer until yes. Randy got it this year. And you went on TV always and said T.O. should get in. But it also, since he's made this decision, from every person I've talked to or I've seen that is a member of the Hall or associated with it, they seem almost, I don't want to say personally offended, but truly bothered that he is doing this about this weekend. Can, is, is that, can you explain if I got that right? And if so, why there is that almost emotional reaction to what he's doing? Mm, my reaction is not emotional. I'm not bothered by it. Like, I'm not surprised at, at all by it either. But uh, uh, Terrell, if he would look back at the history of the Hall, there's been, man, there's heartbreak every Super Bowl Saturday when guys don't get in. He act like his tears are more important than other guys' tears. Lynn Swan waited. I'm talking about a champion. A, 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 a great man, a great American, he had to wait. Harry Carson, man, he stomped and screamed. Harry Carson told him, take me off the list. The Hall of Fame refused to take him off the list. He's one of the greatest players. Eventually, he got in. Every year, I see Harry Carson there. And I remember a great conversation that I have after, after being passed over um, six times, five, five times, got in on my six. And, and that was with Jim Trotter. It was the, he was the first person that, as a selector, that I saw once I got into the auditorium. And he said, Chris, you have the choice. You have the choice that you can either harbor all these thoughts that you had for all these years when you should have been in the hall. You're right. Or you can enjoy the moment and be celebrated with the other greats. I chose to take door number two because it's easy to do the other way. All right? Terrell's taken away. 
his moment. He's taken that moment away from everyone who coached him, everyone who played with him, and that's his own decision. I'm glad the Hall decided to do what they did. Now, if the Hall, if I felt like the Hall was wrong and he should be recognized, I would be the first to say it. Do you think the Hall regrets this decision to include Terrell Owens? No, they're obligated to vote in the best football players ever. They're obligated to do that. And they got it right by having Terrell to be selected. So his, his bus will be in the Hall. But he's decided he doesn't want to come to the celebration. When you say he's depriving the, his coaches or his family or whatever of that moment, I, that's something that I find really interesting because whether I, I think about, because I know you so well, I think about your Hall of Fame speech and you pointing out your close friends, you talking about your brothers and seeing a man who I now know, your brother John, I, I think it's fair to say crying. And he was so taken aback by the things you said about him. Your high school coach is there. What, the, what it means for the other people who aren't, don't get to be the Hall of Famers, that moment, what T.O. is taking from them, as you put it, can you, can you explain what you're talking about? It, there's so many people that help you in a career like this that you can't actually stay up, get up there with a clear conscience and be like, you know something? I'm bigger, stronger, faster. I worked harder than everyone else. I made all the right decisions. There's no one that can say that. Every story in the hall is a tremendous journey of their football life. And it, to me, I'm always amazed that there was always forks in the road. Like their lives were not Hall of Fame lives. Like there was a ch chance and opportunity for them to be marginalized by bad decisions or not wanting to put forth the effort. And there's so many people, man, that pick you up and wash your pads. And, and no one's screaming their name. They don't make millions of dollars. But this is their moment. that you can, rec you can acknowledge them and let people give them some recognition. But you'll never have that weekend. That weekend is gone. Because if he decides to ever go to the hall, you don't have no speaking part. You don't get to say nothing. It's about that new class. So right now it's about the 18 class. Next year, it'll be about the 19 class. In 20, it'll be about the 20 class. So those 15 minutes you have to speak, it is a wrap. It's over with. He'll never get those 15 minutes back. And I can guarantee you, he will regret it. Because that is one of the most powerful moments. I call, it the, I call it the heaven of football. And you get a chance to have a speaking part, and you've decided to give that away because, oh, they didn't let you in in year number one. Alan Page didn't get in either, first ballot hall. Can you imagine that? As great as his. And there's so many other stories of guys. So... I just believe he missed a, a tremendous opportunity. You said if he comes, you know, if he shows up in 19 or 20 or whatever, he doesn't have a speaking part. If he, as he, now he's a grown man, so I, I'm not uh, anticipating this, but if at some point he has a change of heart or philosophy, is conciliatory in any way, do you think the Hall of Famers, because you talk about this brotherhood, you guys, you guys do as much as you can, I don't want to say to protect each other, but to make sure if a guy's down on his luck, help him out. If a guy needs some help to you know, put a hand out. Can he s recover or salvage that relationship, which he, from the, at the very first moment he got in, or right before he got in, I guess, technically, he, he instead of putting a hand out, put his hands back? Is that, or is that permanent now? There's only 320 of us. There's less than 140 of us alive. He'll always be my brother in the hall, regardless if he wants to acknowledge it or not. So he's got a birthright with some of the greatest men who I've ever met. And if he decides not to take advantage of his birthright, that's on him. It's not on me. But he will always be my Hall of Fame brother. He will always be that. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from First Things First or go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.